So I think that studying and understanding how these developmental programs are dysregulated by congenital heart disease or other injuries is really of very broad importance. Uh, in terms of linking the cellular aspects of, uh, of this injury to cognitive uh, and uh, neurobehavioral outcomes. So this is really, really important. From another perspective, it's really important to understand what types of cells are primarily affected because one of the real key questions in regenerative medicine, including uh, regenerating or trying to regenerate the brain or develop strategies to regenerate the brain, is really to uh, develop strategies that are specifically targeted to uh, distinct types of cells. The brain contains thousands and millions and billions of neurons and different types of cells and we want to be able to target specific cells that are affected by different types of injury. So I think this is really interesting from a neuroscientist perspective because it really links directly two crucial organs uh, in the body, the heart and the brain, and begins to really um, uh, clarify how dysfunctions in one of these organs can have long-term uh, effects and long-term impact on the functions of the brain. Well, I think this is an enormously important paper for congenital heart surgeons and for children and families uh, who suffer from congenital heart disease because there's a really good news message here. We've been worried for many years that uh, the things we do during heart surgery can affect the development of the brain. Uh, and We've learned to improve how we do heart surgery so that today the heart-lung machine and the surgery itself really cause minimal damage to the brain. But we still see some kids who have behavioral problems and sometimes learning delays and it's been a mystery as to what might be the cause of that. We're beginning to understand that there are things about congenital heart disease that affect the development of the brain before a baby is even born. And what this paper shows is that the low oxygen level that sometimes results from a congenital heart problem might be contributing to that and can slow down the growth of the brain. The good news part is that it should be possible to reverse that problem using the cells that continue to develop after birth. And, and that's incredibly important information that those cells continue to grow after birth. They migrate through the brain and our study has shown how these cells migrate and mature in the brain and can potentially help a child whose heart problem is fixed early in life for their brain then to catch up and develop normally beyond that point. We found that following birth there are hot spots of stem cells in the brain, particular regions that actually contribute newborn inner neurons or um, inhibitory neurons to the um, developing cortex. And this is the late fetal period up to early infancy. Importantly, we found those same cells in humans with CHD, postmortem tissue, that those cell populations were very, very vulnerable to the impact of congenital heart disease. We think that this represents um, a possible candidate therapy is, would be to restore the regenerative or the endogenous neurogenic potential of these key cell sources. So this study, we found a, a direct relation between subventricular zone neural stem progenitor cells and neurogenesis in congenital heart disease population. Then we found that the reduction of the neurogenesis in the subventricular zone is one of the important mechanisms in immature brain development in congenital heart disease. So next step, um, we would like to investigate more molecular mechanisms in this cell population to develop uh, new therapies to improve 
ニューロジカルデベロップメントインディスプレッションインコンジェクトパーティーズ